we have three areas that God um, instructed Abraham to leave. One was uh, leave your native country, uh, two was your people, and three was your father's household. God did not just tell Abraham to begin going, but he said, for you to begin going, you have to leave some things. There are things I don't want you to bring along. And the first one was your country. Now, country represents identity. Myself, I am a Kenyan because I've been brought up in Kenya. I know quite a number of things about Kenya, you know. I dress like Kenyans, I talk like Kenyans. My, my country represents who I am. If I would go to any part of the, of the world and I must who are you, I will say, I'm a Kenyan. So when God says to Abraham, leave your country, he's telling him, leave the places, leave the place of your identity. Leave the culture of your identity. And if we claim that we are now sons of God, then the first thing, the first thing must be to leave and abandon our former identity. The moment we, we, we come into the faith, we take on a new identity of sons of God. That means we must abandon the other identity of being slaves to the world. We must have a change of identity. And you know, identity is simply what you identify with. In a lot of cases, when a, a, a lady gets married, her name changes to, you know, to the name of the husband's family. Because everyone should understand, I, I now belong to this family. The second Bible says, Blessed is the man who walks not in the ways of, nor stands, nor sits in the seat of scoffers. If, if the only thing that changed when we came to God is our talk, our confession, there's still a lot to be done. If the only thing that changed with you is, is, is what was and added to your talk, by the way, I'm, I'm, I'm saved. But there's nothing else, man. What changed when you came to Jesus? And I'm not speaking about what you tell us. I'm speaking about what we can see. Because there has to be an expression of separation. And being, or rather taking on a new identity, that means you, you now are aware of the things that you have left behind and the new things that, you know, you have just been given access to. That means when you feel like lying, when you want to lie, you ah, I'm now a son of the light. So you don't lie because your identity is different. When you feel like insulting back, remember, I, I have a new identity. I'm a child of the light. When you get tempted and you know you want to bribe, your identity should speak first and say, no, 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 don't do that. We don't do that in the kingdom. You know, the Bible says, and the Spirit of God who bears witness with our spirits that we are children of God. It is the Holy Ghost who, who, who keeps expressing the identity and the more we suppress his voice then the harder it gets to hear him remember the moment you receive jesus the moment you get born again there's a measure of the spirit that is given unto you and he continues to teach you on your identity to bear witness with you that you are now a son in the kingdom that means there are places there are people there are companies that you must leave it's not a question of, you know, no, 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 it's, it's, it's just 
something to do with identity. Otherwise, we shall never grow in our walk with God. If we keep ourselves connected to our past, we shall be making two steps forward and five backwards because we have, we have still not let go of the people we were. You know, the one thing that made the Israelites not to enter the land of Canaan, though God had promised them, was because though they were free, though the Egyptians were dead, those guys were still slaves. They used to face challenges and, and begin telling Moses, it's better you go back to Egypt where you used to take watermelons. How can you exchange freedom for watermelons? See, the challenge with them, they never took on the new identity of free people that were going to be provided for by the kingdom of heaven. God cared enough to be with them uh, through the pillar of cloud in the, in the day and the pillar of fire during the night. They could actually see God with them, but still they refused to take on the new mindset of a free person. It's dangerous if you're still thinking like an unbeliever. It's dangerous if you're still reasoning like an unbeliever. I mean, in your plannings, do you still have space to trust in God? Do you complain like the other people? We're in tough times, and you know, and, and, and life gets tougher every day. But remember, you are a son in the kingdom. God was not crazy when he said, let the poor say I am rich. Let the sick say I am healed. God was not crazy. It's because you being a member, you being a citizen of heaven, now means you have power to create. And God wants you to take that identity and then use your identity to create what he has prepared for you. But you see, if we keep thinking like non-believers, then we end up complaining like them, we end up hating like them, we end up reacting like them. Therefore, there is nothing for them to see in us that should make them come into the kingdom of God. By God saying to Abraham, leave your country, what he means is from today, Abraham, you are no longer a citizen of where you are. I'm going to take you to a different place. And you're going to identify with that new place. We have to begin from this first. If our identity has not been expressed, then it won't help. Great men of God and women of God begin from change of identity. Not with miracles and anointings and, and all those things. We have to begin here. So God says, leave your country. The same way he's saying to you, leave, leave your former places of identity. Le leave them. And the next thing God says to Abram is, your people. When God says, leave your people, people present culture. Our people present our culture. I myself, I'm a Kenyan. Besides being a Kenyan, Kenya has 42 tribes, and I'm a Kikuyu. And a lot of things that I do, how I cook, you know, how I talk, is very much in influenced by my culture. I like having tea after taking supper. Because that's how I was brought up. Tea is something important. Furthermore, I'm tea mothy. Uh, our people are what dictate the cultures that we have. And some of the cultures are extremely good and we should keep them, but some are very bad. Now, what God meant when he said to Abraham, leave your people, is that it was that he was supposed to leave his culture, how he was brought up. He was supposed to change how he did his things. 
and this is very similar to identity. If we can abandon former cultures, only then can we adapt the new cultures because the kingdom of God also has some cultures, some good ones, that can be extremely beneficial to our spirits. We have to be able to change our way of life. Now that we have taken a new identity, we must be able to change or to take on a new way to live. <laughs> you know, this is not meant to scare you, but it, it's, it's a beautiful thing when uh, you get married. <laughs> I'm not married. But you know what that means? You wake up next to that person the rest of your life. <laughs> Sorry. It's beautiful. Of course, you know, you love the person and, you know. But if you got married for the wrong reason, you get bored too soon. All that means when you're cooking and you're budgeting your money, you have to consider two people now, not one. You have to think like a married person. And then children come. Now you begin thinking like a family man. Your way of life changes immediately. It has to change. These are, these are why we bring in the cultures, the practices of, of, of being children of God. Things like prayer, things like the word of God, things like fellowship. These are things that the Bible keeps insisting on because these are cultures of, of now people of the kingdom. Every night, Jesus used to pray in the mountains. Hmm. Every night. Now, we as his people, we should adopt the same lifestyle. A lot of things that you love, it's not you, you who love them. It, it's the people who are close to you. That's why people change when they go, you know, to town and stay there for some time because they realize, oh, the things I used to love, it was not me, it was my people. They find new things that they now love. For a lot of people, they wake up, you know, they make a short prayer, thank you Lord for this day, amen. You know, they take a shower, they take breakfast. Sorry, 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 I missed something. You wake up, you get your phone. You, start, you, you, you watch all the status and the updates on FB and, and Twitter and everything. And then you make a prayer. And then you take a shower. You get to your phone again. <clears throat> you take breakfast. You go to work or you go to class. And then you take lunch. You watch a movie. And then you sleep in the evening. That's, that's, that's a nice life. But now you as a born again Christian, there are things you must begin considering. The cultures of the kingdom of God. Sometimes you won't have to eat. You have to fast. Just to have some time with God. Before you get a hold of your phone, you get on your knees, you talk to God, you talk to God. You converse with Him. He ministers to you. You speak protection of yourself, over your family. These are things that we adopt into. And then you take the word of God. You read what is the Lord saying to you today. And this is not about performance. No, no, no. This is about adapting cultures that edify our spirits. Please, people understand one thing. Whatever Jesus achieved on earth, he achieved it as a son of man, not as a son of God. That's why he always referred to him, to himself, as the son of man. The power of healing, he did not just heal because he was God. He did it because he was a son of man who was practicing the cultures of the kingdom of God. 
And that's why he challenged us to even do greater things than he has done. How can Jesus challenge us to do greater things than he himself if he only did it as a son of God? That's why Jesus prayed every night. That's why he was saying, I do what I see my father do. Because he was trying to teach us, I am doing this as a man like you. And if you do what I do, then you end up doing the miracles that you see me do. One time Jesus comes from the mountain and he finds uh, the disciples trying to cast out some demon. And it's not going and then he commands it out. And then he says to them, these ones need fasting. That means he himself, as Jesus, had fasted. We need to adopt the cultures that Jesus had when he was, when he was here on earth. That's why the book of 1 John says, if we claim, if we claim to love him, if we claim to live in him, then we must walk as he did. We must practice the cultures that Jesus had. Only then does Christianity begin becoming enjoyable. There are a lot of believers who don't sin per se, but they don't practice things to edify their spirits. They are not liars, they are not fornicators, they are not, you know, gossipers. At the same time, they don't pray, they don't read the word of God. And therefore, people end up becoming stagnant. And, you know, church just becomes another place to go and, and chill. Tomato. <laughs> Listen, working with God can be sweet. Well, it can be sweet. You can come to the point where you don't want people why you don't want food. You are so hungry for God. But, but for us to get here, then we must adopt the new way of life. God says to Abraham, leave your people. And then finally God says, and your father's household. Now the father's house, it represents the worship. When, when, when God said to Abraham, leave your father's house, it means leave your way of worship and now come and follow me. And when we speak of worship, it means uh, what we have valued so much. This is the cost to pay for us to work with God. It has to begin from us abandoning our former priorities. Because these people used to worship, you know, the moon, plus many other things. Now God said, I want you to, 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 uh, to leave all that and begin giving attention to me, to begin worshiping me, to begin listening to me first. Now working with God, saying that I'm now a born again Christian, that, that means that God now becomes not just your savior, but your Lord. He becomes the number one thing. He becomes the guide of your life. He becomes the first priority of your life. If we cannot adopt into this, then we will not see the benefits of us being sons. As we should. You know, a lot of people will make it to heaven and they will get to heaven and they will be amazed at the things they never got to experience they, when they were not on earth <clears throat> because they had too little understanding. God says, I want you to leave your father's house. I want you to leave what your father's house has prioritized so much and now prioritize me. If God is not your number one, you ought to make him number one. He has to be the, the number one priority. You know when someone calls you and you tell him, um, I don't have time, we will not meet up tomorrow. It's not that you don't have time, T time is there, it's just that that time is taken. If that same person comes up with something worth your attention, you actually 
uh, reschedule your day just to have a sit down with this person. There are, there are a lot of believers who don't pay attention to the Lord. There are a lot of believers who... God is just another person. Who, who, is, who is God to you? Who is God to you? Who is he to you? Is he the guy you talk to when you feel down, when you feel rejected by people? Now you talk to God. Or is he your daily partner? I mean, God, God wants to, to be in every area of our lives, every area. But we must, we, we must change our attention to him now. And life can only be balanced when we seek God first. Jesus was not saying it for the sake when he said, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness, and everything else shall be given to you. Everything else. You see, other things are given to us, but God, we seek him. This is a price we pay. If we can seek God, if we can seek to know what is the mind of God concerning you know, our life goals, then everything else shall be given to us. See, the Bible says, since we live in the Spirit, let us therefore now walk in the Spirit. And Abhi says, let us therefore now keep in step with the Spirit. It's not just a matter of receiving the life of Christ. That is given. You, do, you, don't, you, don't, you don't work for that. That you receive. We have the life of Christ. Yay. But is that all there is? Let us therefore now walk with the Spirit. That means he become the most valued person in our lives. He becomes the person we talk to most. He becomes the person we hear from most. This is what it means to be a child in the kingdom of God. And this is how we shall grow. So far we have not mentioned any blessings and we shall look into that. We have to begin from here. Having God as, as, as our number one. Paying the price of bringing everything else beneath the voice of God. That means you can want something so bad, but if God says no, you wouldn't like it. You know, sometimes I find myself, you know, uh, seeking the will of God, but I'm not seeking his will. I'm just informing him because I don't want him to say no. <laughs> I guess you go through the same. You know, sometimes you want something so bad and, and you feel you should pray about it. But you cannot just imagine God saying no to that. Walking with God means you are going to follow His guidance. You, we must keep our attention on Him. Because we can still fail. Even if He called us, we can still fail. The moment Peter took his eyes off Jesus, he sank. Before Jesus, in the presence of Jesus, he went down. We must change our attention to God. And the moment we apply these things, we don't have to tell people I'm born again. People begin noticing some differences in our lives based on how we respond to situations, based on how we react to insults, based on how we react to everything. Because we are no longer alone. Remember, the Holy Spirit is our ever, ever present help. Is our ever present help. I want to challenge you as a believer about the things we are not ready to leave, about the cultures we are not ready to leave. You know, there are a lot of believers who curse. Men, people curse. You curse, yet the same mouth is supposed to bless. Uh -uh, they cannot go together. You curse like, shh. people know when you get angry. You see how we normally say, don't, don't, don't tempt me or else you see my true colors. 
what is your true colors? Your true colors is your child of the light. Those are your true colors, men. We worship God and we cry and we soak in his presence until we get angry. We curse like no man's business. For me, I use the mouse cursor, man. At least. <laughs> Sorry. Back to the message. Some people lie. Oh, you lie. You lie. You lie like no man's business. Yet, you are a child of the truth. How can these two things work together? There are things we must change. We must change for us to see the results of us saying yes to God. We must change. This is our duty to fulfill for, for the presence of God, for the glory of God, for the blessings of God. God has no issue, you know, blessing us and making us the head and not the tail. All those things are promised. Actually, most of those things you don't actually ask for, they just come. In his presence there is fullness of joy and pleasures forevermore. God has preserved pleasures for us. But in working with him, we must, we must abandon certain things. We must be able to leave our former places of identity. And, and I'm speaking of the most common things, including the movies you watch, if they have, if, if they are dirty, then you, you just stop watching them. You just stop. If there are places that you always go and you feel and you leave those places as another person, then you just stop going to those places. There's another way of going around about it. We must be ready to change our cultures. We must bring in the cultures of the kingdom. Things like fellowship. We must value fellowship of brethren. These are things that we must now bring into our lives and leave the other cultures. There are so many things just at time, time is limited. And then we must now make God to be the value of our lives. We must now only find our value in God. If anything has so much value but lacks God, then we must cast that off. We must be able to say no to a lot of things. By us saying yes to God, it means we are saying no to a lot of things. And if you are not ready to pay this price, then there's no need to even continue in, in, in the knowledge of God because we don't skip the process of, 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 of knowledge of God because we don't skip these things. If we, cannot, if we cannot sort these things at the beginning, then we shall never move forward. This was a foundation of, of the journey of Abram. This was his foundation, him living these things. And he did live all these things. And there were great, 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 great blessings that came along with that. So if, if you want to see God, if you want to see God, if you want to see his presence manifest in our lives, let us abandon our former lives and take on the new life that is only found in God. Remember Jesus said, I came have life and not just life but have life in abundance. Shabbat.